Hey, welcome back to Church for the Rest of Us. Jimmy Scroggins, Leslie Bennett, Steve Scalisi, Todd Thomas. And uh, we're all here talking about pastoring in the corona apocalypse. Uh, we are broadcasting from high atop our complex in downtown West Palm Beach, Florida. Come check it out anytime you're in town. We'd love to show you around. You'll be impressed. But Leslie, we have been talking about all the different things that God's been doing during the corona virus problem that we're all experiencing. Uh, we've been doing this for five months. Mm -hmm. We've tried a lot of things and learned a lot of things, but God has actually worked through um, the ordinances that we've been doing online. So we've been doing the Lord's Supper and baptism online. Um, we talked about this in a previous episode back in April. I think that's marked episode 1009. Mm -hmm. And we talked about why we're doing that. And I know that's controversial for some, and I've talked to people around the country, oh, we would never do the Lord's Supper online. We would never baptize online. Well, we've done it both. And if you want to see how we do it, just jump on YouTube, watch any of our services. You can see how it's done. But God's actually worked through that in an incredible way. I know. It's been very exciting. So, yeah, we did talk about why we were going to continue to do the ordinances and on our online family church at home services. So that's what we've been doing for 22 weeks. I keep track because that every week when it's done, we're like, yes, one more week. We <laughs> right. did it. Um, and so as we've done, you know, in every sermon, conclude with the Lord's Supper, um, which just allows, I mean, primarily you, Jimmy, you've been our primary communicator, but any of our preaching pastors um, to talk about the gospel and to take us to the Lord's Supper. And then um, we've been doing baptisms. And so we have um, actually Todd um, has worked a lot with our team on nailing down our baptism stories and figuring out how, how we're going to get those online. And now we've really learned that it's so great that we've been able to show all of our campuses every single week people being baptized that as, as we met in person, we're going to continue to do that. Um, so primarily, I would say baptisms in the Lord's Supper have really generated a lot of good conversations around um, people's living rooms. Yeah. So, And I agree with that so much. And, and you know, we we talked about whether or not to do it. So we said, hey, should we even do baptisms? Because we're actually going to baptize people. We got, you know, we don't allow private baptisms or VIP baptisms at family church. We talked about that on previous episodes. But now during COVID, how do we baptize new believers or people that are joining our church? And so we're baptizing them in swimming pools. We're baptizing them in the ocean. But primarily those are the two places we do it. Um I remember looking that up. Remember, we had a conversation about what does the CDC say about swimming pools? Yeah. And so we looked it up and determined that it was okay to baptize in a swimming pool according to the CDC hey, guidelines. I'm no chemist, so, but chlorine, Clorox. Right, right. 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 I, I think it's right there. So, And, and then so, so, yeah, we decided that it's safe, but we also um, we also decided to do it, and then we decided to show it mm -hmm. on all of our broadcasts. Well, normally – or at least before COVID, if you got baptized, you just got baptized during a church service or at one of our beach special beach baptisms, and only the people that were present that day at your campus would ever know or ever see it. But now we're showing the video with the testimony, the story, to the entire church, both in our face-to-face -face gatherings and in our worship at home online services. And it's been really, really powerful. And Todd, you're the one who's been in charge a lot of lining up these baptisms, getting them videoed, getting the story in. So I'd love to hear how that's kind of impacted you because as a pastor of one campus, you've actually been interacting with people from every campus who are getting baptized. We have. And to date, um, when, whenever you all listeners hear this, it'll be more, but we've baptized 56 people. And that's happened from every single one of our family church, uh, neighborhood churches. And so it's, it's pretty incredible, but that's, it's come about in so many different ways. Uh, for instance, there was a men's group that some guys that were starting to connect with our campus were invited to, Hey, join a zoom group. So they start this virtual zoom group when COVID hit. And then they start talking about baptism. One of these guys professes to become a believer. Another one of these guys says, I became a believer when I was younger, but no one's ever baptized me. Well, we found a member of our church who had a pool and we got one of our pastors over there, and we celebrated their baptisms. And so now, instead videoed of... Videoed it with an iPhone. Yeah, so so high-tech. We videoed it with right. an iPhone and, uh, and, and uh, got a great shot of it. And instead of 300 people seeing it at our campus on a Sunday, they've had somewhere between seven and 10,000 people see it on our online broadcast of, of Family Church at Home. Um, another way that it's happened, which has been really neat for a lot of our campuses, is that all these kids went through new believers class, either in February before the pandemic, or they went through a virtual form of it. 
And so then they're getting baptized by one of their parents because we said maybe the best way to do this is if they have a professing Christian in the home who's been biblically baptized, they can do the baptizing. You can just kind of oversee the process. And so you have these parents having these unbelievably powerful moments, getting to baptize their kids, tears every time. It's such a special thing. But we're just doing what Jesus told us to do in Matthew 28, and uh, it, it's been awesome. Yeah, and they are getting to make a public profession of faith. In fact, we think in some ways more a, public a, a, than what we were doing before. It is more public, and one of the things that we've heard from people all over our uh, network of neighborhood churches is, They've asked, can you keep showing the baptisms from our yeah. other neighborhood churches? Because we don't usually get to see what happens at Jupiter or Sherbrooke or, or downtown, Family Church downtown. So, we, it's, it's all, so we're going to probably keep showing these baptisms no doubt. Um, to all of our churches. Well, it's been fun, too, because like every campus doesn't baptize people every week. But we baptize people every week at some campus. Mm -hmm. And so we've been able to show baptisms every single week. And I think people are just like, wow, do you know we're baptizing people every week? And right. Like, we always do that, but you just don't get to see it. So it's it's been really cool. And then it spurred other people on. That was a recent story. Uh, um, you got to baptize a person from our downtown campus, and he said it was seeing the baptisms that uh, merely spurred him on to make that decision that he knew he needed to make and just for whatever reason hadn't made it. Yeah, that's right. It's this guy, Chris Harris. He's a businessman in our community. Uh, he's actually married to to, a, to one of my distant cousins. And so we're kind of like distantly related family. But he and his son, he said he said they were actually in the Bahamas. That's what people do in South Florida when they want to go somewhere. He was in the Bahamas. He was watching family church at home, mm -hmm. watching people get baptized. And he says, you know, we celebrate every single Sunday when these people we don't know from other campuses get baptized we need to do that. Yep. And maybe if we get baptized, other people will see us and be encouraged. And his son, Briggs, who also had received Jesus, says, yeah, Dad, I want to be baptized too. And he went through the, the, the new believers class. And so we got to baptize Chris and Briggs. And um, one of the reasons he got, I mean, the re his testimony is, yeah, I've been a believer, but I've been watching this mm -hmm. for all these weeks, watching these people get baptized and celebrating. And then finally I just said, what am I doing? So, so such a such a cool you know cool story. Yeah, I was impressed. So this we just had our first service and um, we showed a baptism from the Sherbrooke campus. It was two sisters, and we played a song while it was going on, and our people just broke out in a spontaneous applause. They've never met these. They've people. never met these people. But they were honored and excited to be able to hey because they're 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 like they would have done it for. Any anybody, but it's it's our church, it's our family yeah. church, and and uh, so that was just really cool to see, because I was because I know when we're at home we're excited about it, but I was wondering how our people would respond. And man, I was I was over the moon. I couldn't believe they responded like that. It was it was it was a roar. I mean, you could hear it in the room. It was fantastic. And I think we experienced that at every campus. And so I've just been encouraged. You know, the purpose, one of the purposes of baptism, you get to make a public profession of faith. Mm -hmm. But it's a testimony. It's a testimony of the death of Christ, the burial of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. It's a new believer identifying with Christ and connecting with his church. Mm -hmm. And people see that, and exactly what's supposed to happen is happening. And I don't know why. I don't know if the corona made the appetite greater for it or if because we're kind of all sharing and watching the same baptism, if I'm just more aware of the stories, because I wouldn't necessarily know. There's a lot of campuses, a lot going on. But, man, it just seems like people have picked up on that in a way that, I don't know, I just haven't felt that way before. And it's not just baptism, it's the Lord's Supper also. Mm -hmm. So we debated, like when this all started, should we be taking the Lord's Supper online? I mean, can you even do that? I mean, really, the text of Scripture says when you're together, when you're assembled together, you should be taking the Lord's Supper. And so we just kind of decided that that is the ideal, but in the current situation— the best way that we gather is worshiping at home, connected through technology. And so we decided that we are gathering. And we do what's called fencing the table. So at Family Church, we believe that the Lord's Supper is for believers in Jesus who have been scripturally baptized, believers baptism by immersion, and who are connected as a member with a neighborhood church. doesn't have to be our neighborhood church, but connected with a neighborhood church. And we always say that, uh, hey, look, if you have little kids with you and they haven't yet been baptized, we recommend you don't allow them to take the Lord's Supper and you use this as a teachable moment to talk to them about what Jesus has done for them. 
Also, if you're gathered with us and you're not a member of Family Church, but you're a member of another church, and if you would normally take the Lord's Supper at that church, then we invite you to take it with us as our guest. That's a little bit of a wrinkle and a loophole, and I know some people would quibble with that theologically, so don't at me because I know why you would say, but it does allow for Presbyterian or Methodist brothers and sisters who are here but are believers in Christ to say, oh, well, I go to you know, Memorial Presbyterian Church, but... I'm here as a guest, and I can I can take it because I would take it at my church, and so we we um, encourage people in that way. But it does fence the table, and even that type of table fencing has its effect, doesn't it, Steve? Absolutely. We had uh, three people in our church who contacted me in the last couple months and said, "Hey, um, I notice, and I don't know if they just hear it different because now you're at home. It's probably like with your kids. Like I tell my kids stuff all the time, and then." They don't go for it, and then Jimmy tells him, and all of a sudden it's gospel. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, or their teacher tells him, right. or their coach tells him, or whatever. And so I had three of them come and ask me, hey, do I have to be a baptized believer to take the Lord's Supper? I said, well, yeah, as a matter of fact. And, and so we've got three people now in the hopper to, to be baptized here in the coming weeks, and so we're working you know, all the logistics out on that and stuff. So it's just really neat to see how uh, both of the elements actually came into play here with the Lord's Supper and and baptism. One literally led to the other, or is leading to the other. Yeah. Now, Todd, you've gotten to be a part of some of that as well. So our our family, you know, when we're worshiping at home, we have those conversations. One of the best things it's done for me as a dad, and I'm sure it's done this for a lot of other dads, is when that happens, I'm able to talk to my seven-year-old son about it because he has questions and and he's made a profession of faith but we've said we're holding off we want we want to have more conversations with you before we do this and so we're able to reiterate rearticulate the gospel and why we practice the ordinances the way we do and i think those conversations are happening in homes all across our network for for families to one of the things you've done so well jimmy is you tell people what to do in the service like you know sheep need shepherds and so you're telling them what to do gather your family around this might be the opportunity for somebody to recite a favorite verse. Here's what the Lord's Supper means when Christ's body was broken for you and his blood was shed for you. And you're having those discussions because we're leading the way in our online service or now even in our in-person gatherings to explain why we take the Lord's Supper and what it means for us if we believe the gospel. And so uh, I think it's just opened the door for so many great conversations about Jesus. Yeah, I think we've had multiple stories of kids, you know, wanting to know more because of that. And one of our pastors, one of our worship pastors, his son actually prayed to receive Christ because he was asking about, you know, the Lord's Supper and taking the Lord's Supper. And, and so they had the conversation about what is the gospel and he repented and believed. So I think awesome. he's going to do the kids new believers class and, Hopefully be baptized. So Yeah, it's so exciting. Lots of kids. Yeah, and, and the other thing that's happened too is so we, we we have people telling me that at their house, so every week they start doing the Lord's Supper and the kids are like, Hey, why can't I take the Lord's Supper? I want to take the Lord's Supper. What's wrong? And they get into these situations where every week the kid is like, Hey, why can't I take it? Why can't I take it? And it forces the parents to have a, a gospel conversation in a good way. Yeah. And we've also had then we've had children go through the New Believers class, and get baptized, and other kids see the children getting baptized, and like, hey, I want to do that. Yeah. And they start asking questions about that. And so it puts us in a position as pastors and as parents to have really um, really rich conversations with these, with these children. And we're seeing it, you know, all over the place. I know uh, one, one of the, one of the one of our good friends, all of us are good friends with them, is the McPhersons. And Brian McPherson's daughter, Kate, um, became a believer and decided to get baptized and actually has gotten baptized during the Corona apocalypse. But her decision to trust Christ, we talked about it in a couple of sermons and we showed her baptism. And like two different children mm -hmm. in other families, no Kate, saw her getting baptized. Said, I, I want to receive Christ. And so we've had other kids actually ask their parents to lead them to trust Christ and to be baptized directly as a result of Kate's testimony on the video. This is exactly what baptism is for. Yep. This is why Jesus commanded us to do it. This is why churches have been doing it all of these years, and I just love that God's been been doing that. I tell you, what, another thing that I've heard is um, I've heard about people who are what I would call marginal attenders before corona, and for whatever reason, 
they've been watching us very faithfully online, like way more faithfully than they ever attended in person. Have you guys experienced that at your churches? So there's actually a couple of those stories, and uh, they're funny to me because these are some people that I, ne- I never saw in person. I've been in here a year, and when all this started, we're like, hey, here's 50 people to call this week. Here's they're just a phone like, number. Let's just, let's just call people and check in and see how they're doing because they're on a roll. They've been to our church before. So I'm talking to these guys. Well, I'm helping lead worship at Family Church at Home. I'm getting these texts. Man, great service today so encouraged and inspired by that i'm like well just come in person when we ever you know like it'd be yeah. nice to see you in person the next time but the fact that they were that in tune and we're watching every week and talking about how much it's impacting them and their family and how much they appreciate our church and that has been really really special yeah we, we've had a similar experience in the sense that the the, the once a month uh, every two month people I mean, there's no excuse. First of all, there's no competition right now. I mean, there's minimal competition on the weekends. And I just think the, the fact that they can roll, you know, out of bed, have a have bowl of cereal and, and, and go to church it is, has helped a lot of them. And it was neat, though, because on when we had our first service, uh, I saw some of those folks. Now, I'll be interested to see if they, they keep coming. But, uh, but we've, had, uh, we've had some good conversations, very similar to what you're saying, like, Man, I you know they're they're texting me about hey when when pastor said this what 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 did he mean by this and I'm like man we've never had these kind of conversations and probably because the preacher they normally listen to isn't that deep but <laughs> but uh, but it's been That's it's, probably it's, it's, you know yeah I can say it you can't say it come on <laughs> well, I, think I was being false humble come on <laughs> from my perspective even though I serve at church like I'm not a pastor I'm not married to a pastor and I do think that you know bringing church into people's homes or they're comfortable in their living room with their family or their friends mm-hmm. it does open opportunities for conversations that maybe you don't know how to introduce otherwise you know it feels like you know, I always feel like you all know what to say in so many situations, but I feel like the regular Christian doesn't always know what to say. So when you can say, hey, when Pastor Jimmy talked about this or when Pastor Steve, or pa-, you know, and you can start that conversation, it's super helpful. And I think people are more comfortable. That, that it's like a lower um, threshold to have to sure. cross sometimes than showing up at a building with people that you don't know to do things that feel a little bit strange to you. Yeah, but I think that's they, right. And when they do come back in person right now, they probably feel more connected to our church and more ready for the things that we're offering because they've been very engaged. They know the DNA of Family Church maybe even more than they ever would have if this season hadn't happened. Yeah. You know, Sunday, so this past Sunday, we opened for the first time in a long time, and uh, there's a girl who works at our church named Emma. She has a recovery background, and so she actually has been witnessing to some of her neighbors in her apartment complex. She leads them to Christ during the Corona apocalypse, so they've gotten baptized. I mean, these are just wonderful, sweet people, and uh, they, they're they super tatted up, man. They Both of them, the, the, the husband and the wife got like tat. I mean, it's sleeves. It's, it's incredible, and they're just beautiful, sweet people, and so... Sunday, these two people come up to me and they say, Pastor Jimmy, we've been watching you online. This is our first time here, but we're members of Family Church. We've been baptized. And then I, I'm kind of thinking, I'm trying to put the stories together. And then I see Emma come up behind them and I'm like, you're Emma's friends. They're like, yeah. And it was just so awesome just to see that even in the middle of time when we're social distancing and we're wearing masks and we can't gather, man, the church out there is still happening. You know, the gospel is still powerful to save. People are still being saved and still being baptized, and they're taking the Lord's Supper, and they're, they're, they're learning to follow God's design. Mm-hmm. And people are still, we're still doing weddings. We're still doing funerals. We're still doing marriage counseling. We're still having virtual membership classes. We're still having virtual uh, new believers classes for kids so they can be eligible for baptism in our church. And I just want to say to all of our listeners, wherever you are, whether you're gathering face-to-face, whether you're still doing online, you had not really figured out, you know, where do we put our emphasis? Listen, man, just do something. Mm-hmm. Do something that you feel comfortable with. You might not feel comfortable doing what we're doing, but do something to try to make a difference and reach out to people. Because I think God just has this ability to take our best efforts to do the right thing in the right way with the right heart to, to present the gospel to people. And God has a way of kind of weeding out our improper motives or our flawed theology or our messed up methods. And God has a way of taking all of that and just making something incredible out of the gospel and puts it in somebody's way and puts it in front of their eyes and puts it in front of their heart. And God can just, he just, he just saves people. So 
let's just kind of go around for our listeners. Todd, if there's anything you'd want our listeners to pull away from this conversation, what would that be? Uh, exactly what you just said. My response to that, to anybody that's saying, I, I'm not sure what to do, uh, but I've got these ideas. What do you have to lose right now? Like, what's yeah. somebody going to say to you? You tried too hard to pastor me in a <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. What do you have to lose if you try the, the Zoom group Bible study or you decide, hey, we're going to do a baptism celebration at this lake or this beach and, and we've got two or three and maybe more? What do you have to lose to just try some of those things right now? Um, I think the uh, benefit far outweighs the risk to at least give some of these ministry opportunities a shot. How about you, Steve? I, I think our expectations... Uh, can be lowered, and it's and it's a good thing. It, so if you do the Zoom Bible study in two people, it's you and one other person. All right, so what? Now you just had a great Bible study with that person. Uh, it's a reminder what we've been seeing happen, happening in our church. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is still at work. The Holy Spirit has not stopped working. And so uh, whatever, whatever we do, we're just bathing it in prayer, trusting the Lord, and whatever we end up doing, you know, maybe before we used to do a beach baptism, and we combined with a couple other campuses. Man, a hundred people would show up. I just did a beach baptism. It was for a, a, a mom and a son. Her husband showed up, and their friends from out of town showed up. It was the best baptism I've been part of in a long time, at least five months. And uh, <laughs> yeah. but it was it was fantastic. And then to our point before, seven to ten thousand people saw it. Her son thought that was, he's seven years old, eight years old. He thought that was the coolest. Thing. When I told him that this was going to go on the internet, he said, really? Mm-hmm. And so, again, it wasn't a big production. We didn't have the hot dogs and the hamburgers that we normally would do. We have a big celebration. But it was as beautiful and as sweet as it could be. So I'd encourage people to, just to your point, just keep doing it. Last word, Leslie. Well, this is probably, everybody knows this, but just celebrate what God is doing like we've done here today. Yeah. There's so much to celebrate and just keep that in front of your people. Talk about these kind of the things that God is doing at your church and find ways to celebrate it. It doesn't have to be high tech. Like Todd said, we're bapti- um, we're videoing our baptisms on iPhones now. Um, we have some guidelines. Carly can throw them in our uh, show notes about how to capture good video on your iPhone and they are fabulous. And so you can celebrate baptisms. You can celebrate people coming to Christ. You can can celebrate, um, you know, things that you're reaching out to your neighbors and the ways that we're loving our neighbors or walking across the street to talk to people. So just celebrate. Yeah, good word. And guys listening, you can do it. You can do it. God will use it. Um, don't wilt. Don't go into the fetal position. Uh, nobody wants to hear about what you can't do. Tell us what you can do. You know, no, nobody wants to hear about what God's not doing. Let's celebrate what God is doing. And I know things are different. Numbers are different. Money might be different. Um, all kinds of things are different, but so what? Man, God is still on his throne. The gospel is still powerful to save. We are still God's outpost on this earth. The only one that he's appointed and ordained right. to do his work of ministry. And then we get to be the shepherds, the under shepherds, uh, partnering with the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, to take care of these people, to make disciples of all nations. That's what we've got to do. And this is our moment, and this is our time. Hey, I hope you'll get in touch with us. Follow us on social media. Subscribe to the podcast. Tell other people about it. That would be awesome. And uh, hey, look, we're always here for you. You can get in touch with us at Family Church. Email us, call us. We want to do anything we can to help you, to encourage you, to make you more effective in the place where God has placed you. Uh, We love you guys. This has been Church for the Rest of Us.